What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark and this is 360 Finance. In today's video, we're covering Snapchats and boy oh boy did they have quite the quarter. As you can see already, they've jumped nearly 50% since reporting their quarterly earnings, their Q3 earnings 2020. And I think there's tons of room to continue going. This is a company that I've been following, I'd say probably since it IPO'd back in 2017 there, uh, March 3rd, 2017. And I remember pitching it to my friends uh, during the Rams Patriots Super Bowl sometime around like February 2019. And it was trading at like four or five, six dollars around then. And I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't at this point, right? Uh, it's up almost 765% since that low point then. Ultimately, they delivered on three key metrics, which is revenue, daily active users, and earnings per share. We're going to jump a little bit further into their financials, um, but ultimately, revenue up 52%, daily active users up 18%, and adjusted earnings one cent versus an estimated loss of five cents. So incredible quarter for Evan Spiegel and the Snapchat company. Before we get going in this video, I'd just like to point out that almost 90, over 90% 90 of you guys that watch this content actually aren't subscribed to the channel. If you do enjoy this content, please at least consider subscribing all right let's go ahead and jump into the video all right guys let's talk a little bit about snapchat's third quarter financial highlights now uh, i have them up here on the screen so you can see that their revenue increased 52 percent year over year to 679 million and their average revenue per user increased by 28 percent i think this is directly attributable to the amount of daily active users they have obviously that's a very important metric for social media companies uh, or just these big tech companies who rely on uh, dollars per user. So adjusted gross margin improved to 58% compared to 51% last year. Operating margin to 20 minus 25% as compared to minus 51% last year. Net loss was only uh, 200 million compared to 227 million last quarter. Uh, their adjusted EBITDA was 56 million compared to minus 42 million in Q3 2019. And their adjusted EBITDA margin was 8% compared to minus 9% in Q3 2019. Again, this is directly attributable to the amount of daily active users they have, as well as the increase in the amount of revenue per user, as magnified as the first section of this uh, highlights. Operating cash flow improved 21 million year over year to minus 55 million so kind of misleading there they say it improves by 21 million dollars but they're still in the red in terms of the operating cash flow and their free cash flow improved as well 15 million year over year to negative 70 million ending cash and marketable securities increased uh, 464 million year over year to 2.7 billion. So this is uh, very important. I think that they have that cash reserve. We'll take a look at their current ratio in a second here, but just the fact that they have um, a substantial amount of cash on hand just in case of a downturn is a good sign, you know, and this social media company obviously didn't experience a significant downturn when the pandemic happened because it is a virtual business. I know that's very obvious, but it just something to highlight if you're thinking about investing in this company. Okay, some of the business highlights now. Daily active users grew by 18% year over year, and we saw increased engagement across, across key metrics. So daily active users, 249 million in Q3 this year, an increase of 39 million or that 18% as we just talked about. Daily active users increased sequentially and year over year on each of the iOS and the Android platforms. So good to see that they're not just popular on one platform, but on both. And also the average number of snaps created every day grew by 25% year over year. I think that's really important just to, to show that these aren't just people that are coming on to Snapchat and reading news or uh, reading messages. They're actually creating snaps uh, and using the platform more. And 25% year over year increase is pretty substantial in my opinion. And they continue to invest in their Discover platform. And this is something that's very similar on Instagram as well. If you are on Instagram, you'll know that they recently changed the UI and moved uh, almost kind of like a shop down on the bottom navigation bar. Uh, this is definitely a page which I think is important for keeping people active and finding new accounts to follow. Investing in a Discover platform I think is essential. So let's just read some of these statistics from it now. Total daily time spent by Snapchatters watching shows increased by 50% over 50% year over year in Q3 2020. The daily average number of Snapchatters in India watching Discover content increased by nearly 50% sequentially. More than 40% of the US Gen Z population watched sports discover content on Snapchat last month. Obviously with these social media platforms, um, I think the, the most important audience to capture is the youngest uh, generation. So the fact that Gen Z uh, or 40% of Gen Z population watched the sports discover content 
on Snapchat last month. That's a pretty important metric, but it's only been for one month, so just keep that in mind. Sports Center viewership in general on Snapchat increased by 80% from July to September. So a few other points at the bottom there. You can see they mentioned, mentioned Conor McGregor, Kevin Hart, and uh, I think the more celebrities that they get on this platform, the better. All right, so I'm just gonna uh, briefly put up uh, slide five and slide six on this video just so you guys can read through some more of their business highlights i don't think they're overly important obviously it's some uh you know key highlights for the company themselves but i don't think there's too much that i really need to gloss over here as an investor i'm just going to be putting them up on the screen so you guys can see them and ultimately read them yourselves all right right back to the numbers okay so revenue by geography uh we're looking at their four different segments here so global obviously being the sum of all three and then you have north america europe as and then the rest of the world uh, so no doubt North America is has been their most popular segment. They are an American company. I think you would expect that. A uh, couple of things to highlight. Year over year, every single segment saw a massive increase in revenue. Okay, so 52% uh, as a company and 56% in North America, 49% in Europe, only 35% in the rest of the world. Um, maybe that'll change as Snapchat maybe becomes more popular across the globe. But uh, just important to highlight that this has been the most revenue the company company has received in the last year, eclipsing Q4, which was the most profitable in all their segments last year. Average daily active users. So what we're looking for here is what what is the trend? Are they losing uh, users? Are they gaining users? What has been the growth rate in their daily active users? Obviously, this is a very important metric for social media platforms. And I'm pleased to say that uh, year over year, they grew about 18%. And you can see they've consistently grown every quarter since uh, Q2 2019, which to me, kind of indicates that this company is certainly still in the growth phase of their business cycle. Probably the second most important metric when looking at these social media companies is the average revenue per user. And again, this has a very similar trend to what we saw just in total revenue. And it's important to note, again, except for the rest of the world segments, uh, year over year, there has been massive increases in the amount of revenue generated for Q3. 28% as a company, but that's kind of misleading. As you see, a nearly a 50% growth rate in North America and only 36% in Europe. But again, uh, the two most profitable quarters uh, for those segments and eclipsing Q4 2019. Okay, uh, a couple more graphics for you guys to look at here. The adjusted cost of revenue as a percentage of revenue as well as the cost of revenue composition. It's good to see that uh, they've decreased their adjusted cost of revenue as a percentage of revenue, 7% year over year. Uh, as you would expect, infrastructure costs to increase with the amount of daily active users increasing. And we are kind of seeing that when you look at the cost of revenue composition. One of the main areas of the cost of revenue that grew actually was the revenue share cost. This doesn't in include stock-based compensation expense and a related payroll task expense. I mean, I think this is ultimately a positive outcome for the company. Slightly increase infrastructure costs but ultimately, as a percentage of revenue, your adjusted cost of revenue is lower year over year, and it's lower than it's been in the last five quarters. Okay, adjusted operating expenses as a percentage of revenue, again, that has decreased 11%. So it's good news that this company is growing, and as they're growing, they're showing the ability to scale and actually not grow their costs too much. Um, research development, sales and marketing, g &A, uh, all kind of slightly growing proportionally to the amount of revenue gained. But obviously, as you're making more money, you're going to have a higher cost of revenue. It's good news that the operating expenses aren't growing as fast as the revenue is growing. Ultimately, that's all I'm looking for here. Now, despite a pretty uh, favorable quarter for this company, they're still in the red when it comes to uh, net income or net loss. In this case, uh, you can see 29% is their net loss margin. Uh, lowest it's ever been, but still uh, in the red. This company is not making money yet. Uh, so they need to continue to generate cash from investors. And they do, do have a large cash reserve. We saw in an earlier side, slide 2.7 billion. Uh, but if they're losing almost 200 million a quarter, how long is that going to last? Is this company going to be profitable? I ultimately think they will be. It's just a matter of growing the number of daily active users. And that's going to come over time uh, as this social media company 
becomes more popular with the rest of the world. You can see that's the main segment where they're lagging. And also just living in North America, uh, I live closer to like on the East Coast of North, of North America. Uh, this is a company that's a lot more popular on the West Coast. I think if they can capture, you know, the other side of the North American countries uh, and grow in popularity there, we should also see their North American segment surge as well. Okay, so their adjusted EBITDA margin in the positive for the first time since Q4 2019. And as we know, looking at some of the earlier slides, Q4 2019 was their best quarter to date since inception. So again, this uh, quarter has ultimately beaten their best quarter since inception and is now their best quarter since inception, uh, having an adjusted EBITDA margin of 8% or $56 million. Okay, a couple more graphs for you guys. Diluted net loss per share. Again, best quarter they've ever had, minus 14 cents. One thing that's important to note on their common shares outstanding plus shares underlying stock-based awards is that it's not growing in large part as compared to the common shares outstanding. These are shares uh, that are given basically to you know executives or employees uh, that work for the company and it's good to see that it's actually it looks like it's almost shrinking or it has been for at least a year or the last five quarters that's ultimately all, all i'm really looking for on that graph all right so just concluding on snapchat now um so obviously as i already said this video is being recorded on a saturday and probably releasing on a sunday uh snapchat reported their quarterly earnings on a tuesday and has already jumped 52 percent uh this is a company that i believe still has room to grow and capture tons and tons of market share it's ultimately going to be up to Evan Spiegel and what he decides for the company on how to continue growth. Ultimately, if you compare it to some of the other social media giants, Facebook, Twitter, or Pinterest, for instance, it's uh, kind of in second place. Facebook, obviously a much larger company trading at, you know, a market cap of over $800 billion at the time of this recording. Snapchat just kind of sitting at $64 billion. Twitter and Pinterest, both in the 30 to $40 billion range. So I believe Snapchat has a lot of uh, ground to cover when it comes to the social media market. And I believe they will continue to grow into the future. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they do that. I, I think they need to kind of do what Instagram has done recently and kind of push this shop mentality or a shop button or a shop tab on their Snapchat uh, on their platform like Instagram has recently done. And I think that's a big way to grow. And obviously, as you've seen in the financials, they have a lot of work to do outside of North America. And I expect that they will continue to do that into the future. This is definitely a strong buy and long-term hold. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Young age, learn how to get paid. Big stage, long way from session age. Big wave, he gon' have to get saved.